So after we talk about ceramic uh, synthesis, powder synthesis, ceramic um, powder characterization, we're going to talk about uh, processing additives, which means other than ceramic powder itself, quite often people have to add something else. Most cases, some types of small molecule organics or large molecule polymers into the ceramic in order for people to process it uh, in better way. Okay to achieve certain microstructure. So we are going to quickly go through this. Additives in ceramic processing, they are added in small quantity, percentage, low percentage, or, or even lower, to facilitate your processing. Control feed material characteristics, for example, flow capability. I'm giving two examples. You see, these are the same ceramic powder, but in one case, the powder can flow continuously down here. The, the other one, even though I put it upside down, but the powder is not flowing because the internal wonderful force is gluing them together. And you achieve this by adding different additives to give them different uh, flow capability. Sometimes we want fl them to flow like sand, literally like sand flow very easily. Sometimes we do not want them to flow. So these are, you achieve them by additives, okay? And achieve designed shape. For example, people do slip casting. You pour liquid slurry into a mold and get certain shape. In all of this, quite often, you have to add additives, polymers, solvents to achieve it. For example, tape casting, cast the green body or extrude complex shape okay and uh, control packing of the green body before firing and I, sh I showed this earlier you saw this bilayer structure one layer is relatively denser with hopefully closed pores for fuel cell the other layer thicker we have open porosity a lot of very large to facilitate gas distribution gas transport how do you achieve this? You have to add additives to help you control the microstructure. Okay, porosity, relative density, and uniformity to get these. And the features, except for solvents, except for solvents like water, alcohol, additives typically added at what? A lot? No, low percentage level by weight. Quite often 1% or even much lower than 1%. Okay, because otherwise it's going to create a lot of trouble for you. And the most additives are organics, which means after typical ceramic processing, they would be burned away and leave the system so that it doesn't uh, lead to other unwanted properties get removed in substance sintering. Inorganic additives, occasionally people use them, but mostly for conventional, traditional white wire, ceramic white wire, washing basin, those type of things, which you are not concerned with the electrical property or mechanical strength. Those you can add in organic additives. But for any most technical ceramics, we try to avoid or limit the amount of the additives, inorganic additives people add, okay? Common types of additives. Solvents, makes sense. The liquid that uh, gives the flow uh, capability. Dispersant, help the particles, agents to disperse ceramic powder, help the powders uniformly distribute in the solvents and help stabilize the slurry against two things. One is sedimentation, the powder coming down to the bottom of your container in liquid, that's called sedimentation, dropping down because density quite often are higher than your solvents, water or alcohol. Or flocculation, you have fine powder, let's say nano powder, you have a colloidal, but quickly you find the powder come together and the sediment, okay? So the dispersant are help to prevent or delay these two things. The other one, binder, which what? Bind 
glue stuff together, okay? Agents to help to glue or bind the ceramic powder together to give it in particular strength for so-called a green body before firing. Give certain strength to the so-called pre-firing ceramic body to facilitate your handling or give it a certain shape. Okay, and in some cases, cause particles to flock. Some cases, plasticizers. Plasticizers are agents that help to increase the plasticity, which means the capability for your body to sh change shape plastically, irreversibly, permanently, for extrusion, for casting. We have a green tape, we can bend it back and forth. Okay, these are plasticizer to help them have the plasticity. Okay, and there are other uh, agents, foamy agent, who help you to generate foam if you want them. If you want uh, high, poros high porosity, certain thin layer, foamy agent. Or sometimes you do not want foams, you want uh, to be foam free, you do not want gas bubble trapped in there anti-foaming agent, lubricant, okay, you add something to facilitate the motion of slurry within your dye, paste within your dye, you do not want them to stick there, lubricant, okay, and vetting agents to help them vet the body, fungicide, bacterial side, to kill bacteria, it doesn't give you smell as you process it. Because sometimes, believe it or not, if you have organics, it's going to give you unwanted smell in the system. Okay?